Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video builds on our recent one about what is probably Iran's most strategically important asset. Its most advanced kind of tunnel complex is bored into hard rock, called missile cities. In that prior video, linked above, we explained how this unique portal launch tunnel complexes operate and their important role in ensuring Iran's survivable second strike capability during extreme escalation scenarios, such as a nuclear war. However, a key question remains. What true value does this nuclear-hardened ballistic missile launch infrastructure hold for Iran, a non-nuclear regional power that has voluntarily limited its missile range to 2,000 kilometers? The answer lies in recognizing the enormous resources and costs required to construct such portal launch tunnel complexes. This cost factor historically drove even the United States away from building such complexes during the Cold War's peak, as they were developing a second strike capable launch method for their next generation MX Peacekeeper intercontinental ballistic missile. The critical takeaway here is that Iran has almost certainly invested in these monumental complexes to enable a global strike capability using a low-cost, intercontinental-range ballistic missile. A missile so economical to produce that it could be deployed in large numbers, even when armed with conventional high-explosive warheads only. No other nation has developed a conventional intercontinental-range missile with a survivable launch method which is nuclear strike-hardened. So if you're interested by how this could be feasible, drop a like and subscribe to push the channel. The logic behind it is far more straightforward than it might initially appear. Back in 2008, 17 years ago, Iran publicly revealed its efforts to develop missile technology derived from the Soviet R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missile, the most advanced missile in its range category during the Cold War. Both Iran and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea pursued this high-end technology. But while Korea struggled to master it, Iran succeeded, resulting in the 2017 unveiling of the Koram Shar-1 missile. At first glance, the Soviet R-27, designed in the 1960s with a range of roughly 3,000 kilometers, seems an unlikely foundation for intercontinental missiles, which typically possess ranges exceeding 10,000 kilometers. However, the R-27's core technology inherently possesses all the key performance features necessary for an ICBM. In fact, the same Soviet design team that created the R-27 leveraged its architecture in the 1970s to develop the R-29, a submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missile. The R-29 was an upscaled enhanced iteration of R-27 technology, though its increased size primarily addressed the Soviet Union's requirement to have reserves to carry future multiple warheads. This makes best sense given the missile quantity limitation of a nuclear submarine. Hence the R-29 was not just developed to merely extend range to intercontinental. For more details on the R-27 and Iran's Khorram Shar, check out our dedicated video linked above. What holds great technical significance is a performance characteristics chart Iran disclosed in February 2025. This chart shows an impressively high specific impulse for the Parvin second stage engine, which employs the R-27's Vernier engine system, originally designed for thrust vector control. When these officially published parameters are applied to the ballistic missile calculator provided by the Deep Dive Defense Channel, accessible to channel members, the result is striking. Integrating a Koromshar first stage with the compact Parvin second stage engine would convert the R-27-derived Koromshar into a light intercontinental range ballistic missile. This leap from a 2,000 to 3,000 kilometer range missile to an 11,000 kilometer lightweight, compact ICBM still capable of delivering a tactically viable 400 kg conventional warhead, is remarkable on its own. However, the true breakthrough lies in the simplicity and minimal cost required to retrofit existing Koromshar missiles with such a small second stage. Such a modification would bypass Iran's self-imposed 2,000 km range limit, enabling strikes against its primary adversary, the United States, specifically targeting the U.S. East Coast. The feasibility of this concept hinges on the modification's affordability. The missile's compact dimensions, approximately 15 meters in length and 20 tons in weight, combined with Iran's ability to manufacture it at low cost, allow for quantity production. This producibility makes deploying a conventional armed ICBM as a global strike weapon economically viable. 
Estimates suggest the additional expense to upgrade a Coram Shar 2 into a lightweight ICBM would amount below 20% of the existing Coram Shar 2's total production cost. While these calculations are technically sound, this remains a speculative theory until we factor in Iran's 2023 unveiling of the Coram Shar 4 K bar. The progression from the Coram Shar 2 directly to the Coram Shar 4, omitting a 3 variant, raised questions. As detailed in a separate video linked above, the Coram Shar 4 represents the first two stage Coram Shar variant. Its second stage functions more as a post boost vehicle equipped with an attitude control system employing thrusters for exo-atmospheric trajectory changes to counter adversary missile interceptors like the U.S. Standard Missile 3. Additionally, this attitude control system is used to put the re-entry vehicle into an artificially steeper descent angle than a pure ballistic trajectory would allow, enhancing precision and terminal velocity. However, this maneuver demands an advanced heat shield to withstand the intensified aerothermal stresses encountered during re-entry. This last point is critical because an ICBM requires both the staging system, mentioned first, and a re-entry vehicle heat shield capable of surviving Mach 20 re-entry velocity. The Coram Shar 4's artificially steepened re-entry angle of around 45 degrees likely has to survive very similar aerothermal loads compared to the approximately 20 degrees when flown on a minimum energy ICBM trajectory. This suggests that its existing heat shield, or minor modifications, could be suitable for ICBM re-entry conditions. However, one puzzling feature of the Coram Shar 4 was its unusually long interstage section, which made no sense for a post-boost vehicle equipped with small attitude control thrusters. Yet this wasted space on the Coram Shar 4 begins to make sense if the design anticipates a second stage for an ICBM variant. A second stage equipped with the Parvin engine featuring the two vacuum-optimized high-expansion ratio nozzles flown on the Saphir and later Space Launch vehicles, would require precisely such an interstage compartment. A plausible explanation is that the Coram Shar 4 uses the first stage of the hypothetical Coram Shar 3, the proposed ICBM modification of the Coram Shar 2, replacing its second stage with a post-boost vehicle designed for ballistic missile defense evasion. This raises the question, how realistic and practical is the Coram Shar 3 light ICBM concept? The answer lies in its cost and complexity. Such a missile costs would likely be comparable to the Coram Shar 4 K bar, despite the latter being an overall more sophisticated system due to its evasion focused post boost vehicle. Notably, the weight and size difference between the Coram Shar 4 and the theoretical Coram Shar 3 ICBM would be marginal, just around 5%. This surprising result brings us back to the portal launch missile cities discussed earlier. These hardened tunnel complexes, designed to survive nuclear strikes, could deploy such a Coram Shar 3 ICBM without modification, as their infrastructure already accommodates liquid propellant missiles with similar dimensions. When the portal launch system was first revealed in 2020, it was displayed with the EMAD ballistic missile, which interestingly necessitated spacers to fit its 25 centimeter narrower diameter missile stage, but at 2 meter greater length than the Coram Shar. This implies the system's primary intended missile is the Coram Shar family. The proposed Coram Shar 3 ICBM's two liquid propellant stages also align with the safety protocols required for secure operation within tunnel based launch facilities, as detailed in the separate video mentioned at the start. In essence, Iran's investment in the complex portal launch missile cities becomes well explainable when viewed through the lens of enabling a low cost, conventional armed global strike ICBM capability. A nation capable of developing the Koram Shar 4, a missile of considerable technical sophistication, would logically be capable to develop and pursue the hypothesized Koram Shar 3 ICBM, as the costs and developmental challenges are very comparable. Furthermore, Iran's status of a latent nuclear power, able to assemble a small nuclear arsenal within days, amplifies the deterrent value of the portal-launched light ICBM. The launch complexes guarantee the survival of Iran's second strike capability even under the condition of full-scale nuclear attack. When combined with an intercontinental reach conventional strike ballistic missile with sufficient precision, their role at Iran's highest available escalation level and the deterrence they create becomes spectacularly clear. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.
It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.